DC is just one of those franchises that um, it's been such a mess for so long uh, as far as their film division. I mean, their comics are even worse now, but uh, their film division uh, is a disaster zone as far as organization and structure. Uh, they do not have what they need to be producing uh, good, continuous projects, you know, Every time something comes out, you have no idea what the general uh, tone of it or uh, quality of it will be. Say what you want about the monotone and often kind of opaque nature of Marvel films. You're going to get a Marvel film each and every time. Uh, it's, uh, is it good? Maybe. Is it bad? Eh. But you're, you're more likely to be like, eh, it wasn't a waste of money than you would be if you went into a, a DC movie where there's all the likelihood that you could end up walking out absolutely hating it. For the record, I'm not one of those people. I do tend to enjoy most of them more than the average Marvel film, but that's just me, and I understand that I am, for the most part, in the minority as far as box office tells me in that respect because the numbers have gone consistently down um, over time. Uh, Justice League did absolutely horrible. Uh, Zack Snyder's version of Batman vs. Superman, or the, the director's cut, was uh, supremely better than the theatrical cut. Um, but it doesn't matter. By that time, the damage is done. And Dane mm -hmm. has his own thoughts. Dane is not happy with hated Ben Affleck as uh, as Batman, whereas I was Terrible. okay with it. Uh, but uh, but what the the thing that struck me the most is like it's been five years since we've had new Superman, arguably the most bankable character in the world. No way, the, Daddy. You know it's uh, Batman. Um, the, you could say that, but I, I, I get, maybe that's true. But the the Batman, which got rave critical praise, didn't couldn't make a billion. Uh, so if, if Batman can't, am I supposed to accept that Marvel who makes, can, uh, makes a billion far more frequently, right? Has the Avengers, which 10 years ago, nobody that well, 20, uh, 15 years ago, nobody had ever heard of, uh, out, outdoes the justice league, which everyone has heard of, even if they didn't grow up reading comics. Their casting is phenomenal. The, uh, Their casting is phenomenal. Like you can't compare Robert Downey Jr. Wow, that was the most Hispanic thing ever. You, you can't compare Robert Downey Jr., uh, Iron, Iron, his Iron Man, to like Ben Affleck, Batman, bro. Well, and I'm, you okay. know. So the it. the point is, is that the merger at Warner Brothers has gone through. They are now o owned by Discovery Plus, making it Warner Discovery. Uh, and David Zaslav, who is now in charge of DC, is very much, from what I understand, uh, he's not. He, all the fat is being trimmed and cut, and this oh, dude God. wants to make money. That's that's what he should be doing. He should not be focused on passion projects. He should not be focused uh, on on check boxes. He should be trying to make money with these franchises. Oh, I so see. A businessman looks at a character like Superman and says, "Why the hell are we not monetizing Superman?" I mean, uh, I, this is going to seem like a weird example, but I think that there is a market right now for everyone says that you can't make Superman movies because he's a Boy Scout, right? I reject that notion. Boy okay. Scouts are cool. Right now, uh, like, you get lost in the woods. This <laughs> you exactly. want a Boy Scout. Right? Exactly. Well, you want Superman to come find you, but, especially him. Um, but the point is, like, I've been watching. We watched. Um, we reviewed. Uh, the Adam Project, which is a C minus movie at best in a good in a good decade of movies, but because it's just a wholesome, generally family oriented movie, I gave it like an A minus because there's such a lack of that right now. Mm -hmm. So there is a market for not everything uh, needs to be dark. Uh, not everything needs no, to be. You don't understand. Like Batman is emo. I am Batman. Edgy e boy. I'm fine. <laughs> I, well, obviously Batman. Should Superman be. is boring because he's not emo. The point is that you can do <laughs> no. both. The point is that you can do both. <laughs> Batman's a couple, I mean, everything he touches dies, and yet he persists. Like that's the cool thing about him. But I'm saying that they need what they need is uh, so. So it says David Zaslav wants to bring in somebody, of course, like a Kevin Feige, which uh, he's the he runs Marvel's uh, Marvel Studios, right? And so they talk about they want to basically shoot, do their own offshoot, make DC its own thing, like. War, it doesn't need to, they shouldn't be coming out as Warner Brothers movies. They should be coming out as DC movies, like as in their own studio, yeah, uh, their own offshoot. So it says Variety offers insiders. Uh, uh, Variety offers insiders have filled them in that David Zaslav, the CEO of Warner Discovery, wants to create something similar to what Kevin Feige has done at Marvel uh, with uh, something like DC Studios, where all of DC would fall under the leadership of one exec, where one would uh, where the movies and the TV and assuming games and comics. Would would all fall under that and he mentions that in here he goes what the hell is going on with video games you got all this ip and the last great 
video game you guys released was like what Arkham it was like an Arkham game like years ago. It's not even. I mean, it's it's decent. Yep. Like I don't, I don't. I think it like the controls were really clunky. So it says, it says Zaslav has, uh, has already interviewed candidates for the job, uh, including 20th Century Studios and Paramount executive uh, Emma Watts, but it doesn't appear that Watts will take the job. And it also said that Zaslav is not looking for a creative like a Kevin Feige to take over, but someone with more business like uh, someone more business like to lead yet leave the creative direction open. See, Kevin Feige, it's very hard. to. They tried to do this with Walter Hamada here and they tried to do it with. Um, Jeff Johns, who are both, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Johns came from the world of comics to the studio level, and it didn't really work out the way that they wanted it to. Um, and Hamada has, I, I have another article uh, pulled up here uh, from Geek Osti that says that they do not believe that uh, Warner uh, will, uh, that Warner Discovery plans to replace uh, the film president, Walter Hamada, who had been, uh, he, uh, d I'm not sure if you were on any of the, the episodes where we covered about Ray Fisher. Uh, he was pulled into that whole suit about um, uh, poor working conditions and that they were mean to Ray Fisher. And he, uh, he accused Walter Hamada of racism and all this stuff. I, and it just, maybe the, an early episode. Yeah. So it's a, but it says uh, CEO David Zaslav is looking to replace DC Films president Walter Hamada. This is part of Zaslav's plan to restructure DC Entertainment. It sounds familiar. Uh, so he just talks about how they want to get rid of this guy. And I think that they. They do lack. I, I used to be of the opinion they they, they didn't need a Kevin Feige because they didn't need to do a cons uh, like a um, connected universe because that's what everybody wants to do. We're going to talk about a ridiculous one that somebody pitched later in in here uh, for another uh, another connected universe. But even if you don't do that, even if all you do is standalone films, you still need somebody to be creatively overseeing all of these projects to make sure that you're not stepping on anyone's toes uh, and that your movies are reaching all of the demographics you want to reach, meaning that you can't make one type of movie all, you know, Marvel makes a very similar type of movie film the film if dc wants to really branch out they could still use a creative director to help streamline the process between directors uh when movies come out so if you have a darker batman movie coming out in the fall you have a lighter toned superman movie coming out in the spring uh and then you have a family oriented uh animated movie coming out in the uh, you know what i'm saying like you want somebody who's got, who you can trust to be overseeing all of that with the three you know the thirty thousand foot view what I uh, what I think DC needs the most, and please correct me like mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, I think they need someone to realize that their brand is so good and act with the confidence of that. You know, not want to be not want to be Marvel, right? Because like I think they tried that just without confidence, right? But like, and they failed. But you need that confidence. Yeah. You need that. You need that brand ambassador. I mean, in my mind, always the solutions are within the marketing because, like, within the marketing, you realize what you got. Yeah. Because there's only three optimal ways to market something. Number one is to be the first out. Number two is to have the best product. Number three is to have the best uh, user experience and, like, okay. customer service, right? And I'm trying to see, like, how, how you could engage that within film. Well, like customer service in film could be like multiple downloads, you know, like first in product. Could they kind of tried to do that when they did their day and date release to like where they released movies in the theater and on HBO Max at the same time. That was a big, a humongous failure um, for them. It spread them too thin uh, and, and discouraged people from going to the theaters where they wanted to see the return. So they though, tried that route. Though actually, uh, actually, I can correct myself. I, I tossed an article that we were going to cover last week it was it just didn't feel like there was enough there but basically um hbo max has come is now is jumped ahead of disney plus and hulu as the third largest streaming service next to netflix and amazon prime so in a way i guess you could say it hurt their film division in the in the box office but it benefited them when it came to hbo max as i'd say that's a huge reason to to have that app and i pay uh, I, it's my second favorite next to to Amazon Prime, but it tends to just go in waves. Whereas, like, I'm watching a lot of like one uh, network at a time or, or one set of shows at a time, so it kind of uh, goes between them. But I am a huge fan of HBO Max, so maybe that's like you said, they marketed it as uh, that type of method before, and that helped them. But they want, and ultimately, they want the the, the box office to be bigger. Here's how I do it: I I'd, I'd be I rehaul the marketing to be 
guys we're going to a completely different direction for the dc movies you know we're gonna get we're gonna give justice to characters like superman and batman mm -hmm. and then have like an extended period of marketing where you're like letting know the two people like what actors you're getting and, and why you know like really build it up and like a slow trinkle of information that shows you like the actors are in the scripts good yep and the best possible teaser you can get a short minute and give them nothing more but conjecture until the movie yeah too many trailers is absolutely too many a, a huge it kills them uh i, I will want the day before uh, I, I will say that there is a they have always had the, you mentioned confidence and that's a huge problem after Batman super Batman vs Superman faltered they retooled everything they didn't just let it ride and give him a chance to first of all if they had just let it ride and let the direct the the ultimate edition come out maybe he doesn't win everyone back but there's a, something to be said about consistency right so uh did they lose it because people hated that movie or did they lose it because then all of a sudden the next movie which has the same characters feels like a completely different film I would argue that that's just as detrimental to the to the process of ga of gaining um, viewers and, and ticket sales as uh, a movie before it not doing well. What they have to do, similar to Marvel, is to build the relationships with these like A list actors. It's like, hey man, do you want to be Batman for real? For real? Like you know, like you like take on this character through a couple of stories, through a couple of wor uh, worlds, you know. Like b grow with them. Like mm -hmm. you're gonna be the guy. It's hard. Girl, to, it's whatever. hard. Like, it is very hard to get A-list actors to commit to contracts like that. It is. It, that is a lot of years, a lot of time, and a lot of uh, giving them first dibs at your at your schedule to get somebody who's in demand who can bargain who who can use that uh, use their name to negotiate for higher you know higher prices and contract extensions with other studios for other projects so Robert Downey Jr for as successful as he is in that franchise none of his other stuff other than Sherlock Holmes recently did anybody go see Doolittle no I don't know anyone that went no. and saw Doolittle nobody really like i'm excited for him to do because he's going to be co-producing the shirt like more sherlock holmes stuff but his other stuff doesn't really do that is a once in a lifetime find to get somebody who absolutely works there but isn't really working outside here's what i'm saying they tried the customer service route mm -hmm. they tried the being the first in market route well, fail fail they tried they didn't try for being first they tried copying which is even worse no but like releasing the movie before oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah yep like first in first out fail fail so their only option according to those to those principles is like okay now you really got to put your efforts in having the most high quality product yep uh and it, to it shouldn't be that hard because <laughs> Marvel's whole selling point slash their greatest weakness is their predictability. Yep. You know uh, what you're getting. It's like fast yeah. food. You know what you're getting every time you get it. And I don't get the appeal, but a lot of people are going just because it's you predictable. You don't like them? No. Uh, no. I think it's just it's the cinematic equivalent of like popcorn. Like you eat it and, and it's gone. Do you like like and, any superhero movies? Um, Only like ancillary ones. Like I loved Walking Phoenix. And that's not that's not a superhero. A, that's movie. not an ordinary. Which one? She's talking about Joker. That's DC, but like ah. that's not an ordinary right, right, right. superhero movie. in a world. It's, just, uh -huh. it's yeah, it's just in a world. Like I think there should be more focus on these ancillary characters. In in 2016, I said what they need to do is stop focusing on blockbusters, start making smaller budget movies that are more story and focused, uh, more story focused, uh, and stop that way. The the if it fails, it's a far less of an investment. Uh, and if it does well, your potential for profit is huge. Being uh, the exact answer you gave is Joker was made on a $55 million budget and made a billion dollars at the box office without a China release. The um, <laughs> That's insane. And they could be doing that on a more regular basis. They did. Uh, not everyone works. They, I think they made uh, Birds of Prey for about the same amount of money. And that movie was extremely awful. But the joke. But they tried to do it on a, on a smaller budget, but you have Margot Robbie in it. I'm sure she cost a pretty penny to, mm -hmm. you know, to hire. But the Joker had an energy about it and it came at a time, right? Where it was And the like, media helped. Correct. Uh, so it had, yeah. had a framing, it had energy, it had kind of this like... J yeah. Like, like the, I have and to the watch. framing, that was subversive. And then the framing for Birds of Prey was like 
Girl women, boss, girl yeah. boss, bad girl. Oh, it I, also, I can blow it up. It also had yeah. the worst. You know? It is maybe <laughs> arguably the worst name ever given to a movie in the history of the world. <laughs> birds of prey. It, that's not the name of the movie. The, the name of the movie was what? technically the birds, uh, the birds of prey, and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, which is what? the worst name I've ever heard for a name. It was what? so. I kid you not. It was so bad that a week into its release, <laughs> a week into its release, they just changed it to Birds of Prey. Base. That the, they hated it so much. It's not as bad as what was the movie where they actually made edits to the movie in the middle of the film. It was like Cats or something came out <laughs> and they like edited the movie. It might have. It, it probably wasn't Cats, but there was a movie where like because it's digital, they like literally changed stuff about it in during the week and made the changes. So whoever saw it in the first week saw a different <laughs> movie than whoever saw it the second week. As the resident big chongus in the crowd, <laughs> that title has massive low chongus energy. Yes. I'm saying, I'm saying, but they're saying they need a studio creative head to be like, no, we're not giving it that name. But is that the, is an awful name. But is the money guy gonna be that? that well, that's that's the thing. They they need to find a, a happy medium between right. a money guy uh, who's well, yeah. Hopefully, the money guy's like that title is going to lose us a bunch of money. Nay, it's gotta make money. Yeah. Uh, so well, it's like who even knows what that's about? You just put Harley Quinn right at the end of you, that long ass title. And you know that whoever wrote that title is like, yes, Queen Slay and thought it was great. They're like fantabulous. fantabulous. That's, that's great, right? What is it, 2009? Um, okay, by the way, I, I'm gonna point out, this is why none of this is going to work. Ta-Nehisi Coates turns in woke black Superman script soon. Remember, this is not um, Calvin Ellis. This is not Val Zod, uh, which is what um, Michael B. Jordan is doing. They're just going to make Superman black uh, and have J.J. Abrams produce it, which means you have a strike against J.J. Abrams, who is horrible at uh, at doing any type of uh, adaptation like this as star as his Star Trek movies have uh, shown people. Uh, a lot of people, he, he's got a, a company called Bad uh, Bad Robot, which they a lot of people ironically call Bad Reboot. Um, mm. I, oddly enough, he created one. He is the producer of one of my favorite television shows of all time, Person we of Interest. know it, Person of Interest, which is um, a, a uh, an original piece by Christopher Nolan's brother, Jonathan Nolan. So I don't think he had anything to do with that other than the production elements of it. But uh, they want to do this. So, so Ta-Nehisi Coates, who is admittedly a divisive person in general, nobody uh, that is not an activist actually likes him uh, or his writing. He destroyed Captain America. He kind of destroyed uh, Black Panther. He's just not a good writer, uh, in my opinion. You know, if, if you like his stuff, that's, that's your... Did he do the Black Panther movie? No, not he. Oh. Uh, he worked in the comics. Um, okay, I was like, the so good. but uh, no, no. He, uh, I bl I don't know if Ryan Coogler wrote that one, but uh, I know Ryan Coogler directed it, and he also did Creed. So, uh, so it says it's said that Ta-Nehisi Coates will be turning in his Superman script, uh, which will feature, which is thought to feature a black version of the Man of Steel. This info comes from trade writer Jeff Snyder, and I'm just saying, who's over here? Like, why is this stuff getting made? Like, nobody wants this because representation matters. But uh, but, but uh, the, like static. The, the, you I'm don't understand. Okay, I'm saying then, then there's an abundance of characters that they can use. They're using uh, John Henry Irons on on Superman and Lois right now. They're using Steel. Mm -hmm. uh, do that. Do that and do not do this because nobody wants this. And remember, I'm the person who most of the time has no problem with uh, with race swapping from source material to the movies as long as they don't brag about it. But there are certain characters that are so iconic I have you, never, by the way, I've never seen someone do that and not immediately brag about it. Yeah, when is when does that happen? Nick ever? Fury is not was not originally black in the comics. Nick Fury. But there's a black rendition of it, I think. But yeah, but after the fact. Oh not, really? Yeah. Okay, oh. so so but they did, but when he, they came out, Samuel L. Jackson is just a freaking awesome actor, and it worked for the role. But you know that if they if they make Superman black in this in, in rural mid uh, middle America, oh, it's yeah. going to become. Uh, yeah. It's going to become part of the story, and he does not know how. And Tanahisi Coates, in my opinion, does not know how to write without making uh, political grievance part of his storytelling, which nobody freaking wants anymore. They just don't. So, uh, especially not for what uh, uh, Mary so adequately, uh, uh, eloquently said: popcorn movies. People go to these movies to have fun, not to. They want to escape from what's going on in the real world, not deal with it again in the vein of uh, Superman being being swapped like that. So, just and make that's it. Just why make we a, have to blast them with propaganda <laughs> where they're at their weakest. So, please, if Tom Hasey Coates is going to do this, and I don't think he would do this any better either, make a steel movie. I would watch that. Or uh, Static Shock, if you, you know. It, just do it. 
I really don't want to. I really don't want them to ruin him because that that was like a surprisingly well show. Right? Now that I think about it, when you it. really look back on it, it was. It, but but it couldn't be done with the same eloquence that it it was. Yeah, it was back tasteful. Then. Uh, it wouldn't work now. So uh, all of these, uh, and I'm just saying, all of this stuff is going on. And then there's others. It says rumor that Ta Nehisi Coates Superman script leaves the door open for a Henry Cavill return because they're talking about how Henry Cavill is going to be uh, basically taken out of the timeline in the Flash movie through Flashpoint, the the Flashpoint paradox storyline. My point of all of this is to say if this sounds confusing to you as it does to me who's researching it that is a breakdown of leadership and an inability to provide a consistent form of entertainment through the studio which they are failing at and david zaslav who's in charge now has a very 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 uh tough job ahead of him that's what i'm saying they're scrambling scrambling they're just like always scrambling yeah change this try this a new formula new actor uh, ben affleck oh, i don't know isn't he famous uh <laughs> like they gotta they just gotta hey let's do a batman movie let's do a superman movie what do people like about batman well it's the most famous batman story can we do it can we like go from there you what know? did you dislike about ben affleck's batman he <sighs> He just doesn't have the like the suave intellectual debonair <laughs> I disagree. air that Batman. Oh, does. also, I I am gonna go back. I'm I'm going to break my rule and go back into three. Did you see this <laughs> article? Josh Brolin recalls losing out on Batman role to Ben Affleck. How would you have felt about that? I'd have to see it. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think Josh Brolin could have played uh, an older Ben, an older Batman, pretty well. But uh, they were talking about how uh, Snyder had originally had um, the reason uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan was cast as. Uh, Bruce Wayne's dad uh, in uh, Batman vs Superman. They were like, "Why would they get such a, a high level actor for such a small role?" The scenes like do twenty seconds long or a minute long. Actually, it's probably like five minutes long with all of Snyder's slow mo. Was because they were originally going to do the Flashpoint paradox storyline, where then Batman becomes uh, Thomas Wayne and Bruce's mom becomes Joker. Can I t what? Can I tell you something? I think Henry Cavill would be a better Batman than Superman. I disagree. Interest. What? Okay, then tell me why. Because what what I liked most about Batman is like, Batman is three steps ahead. Like mm -hmm. he already planned it. He's he's not telling you yeah. what's going on. Like he already did it, and he shows through action. And I think Henry Cavill. What's appealing about him is that he seems to be like a, almost like a brooding intellectual. Like he keeps it. Like he's very precise about and meticulous about what he says. Mm -hmm. And Batman's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like tortured and torn and silent and like he only really like comes out to his butler who's his like metaphorical old father figure, you mm. know? So I think and he I don't know, he he has the look too. Yeah. Like good looking, debonair, millionaire guy. Like he could pull it off. Uh we we we'll never know now. now sadly. We'll never know. We will never know. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.